Hello and welcome to Newsmakers for this Monday, April 15th, 2024. I'm Louis Butko and thank you for joining us. And on today's show, I'm very pleased to be joined by the mayor of Burlington, Marianne Mead Ward. A former journalist, Mead Ward was first elected to Burlington City Council in 2018. 10, serving eight years as city councilor. She was elected mayor in 2018, defeating a two-term incumbent and becoming just the second woman to serve in that role and was re-elected overwhelmingly for a second term in 2022. In addition to her role as mayor, she is also the chair of the Ontario Big City Mayor's Caucus and also represents Burlington as a board member of the Association of Municipalities of Ontario's Large Urban Caucus. And Mayor Mead Ward, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Great to have you on it. I want to jump into an issue of the day today, uh, the GO Train announcement. Premier Doug Ford was in Milton today, uh, increased service on the GO line, including every 15 minutes in Oakville. Um, any reason, any reaction to, to Burlington, Aldershot kind of being left out of this announcement? Oh, I'm sure it'll come. <laughs> but we, we do have 15 minute uh, service during rush hour and we also have uh, express trains leaving from Burlington GO station. So, uh, you know, we're, we're well served and uh, whenever a new community gets additional service, it really helps us all because people have the choice of where they're going to take the train. Uh, and, and, you know, we're very fluid here in the GTA. People live in places that are different from where they work. So increased transit investments, I always welcome. Yeah, absolutely. And and we'll get to the, your you know, Ontario Big City Mayors. It's a busy week for you, so we appreciate you making the time. Uh, but let's jump right into uh, the, a bit of an issue that's been happening the last few weeks, and that being the uh, this the strong mayor powers. And I want to quote what you said last week in this. You wrote, unfortunately, there has been much speculation, rumor, fear-mongering, and misinformation circulating in the community about the nature of these new responsibilities, about how they have been used or could be used, and the role of councillors that the mayor now runs the city councilor and councilors are observers. You continue mm -hmm. here. Uh, this misinformation has hampered our ability as a council and the community to have the thoughtful, respectful and fact-based review about this new way of governing together that I was hoping to have just as our new CAO joins us. As a result, the last few weeks have been difficult for staff, the community and council. It's time to press the reset button. What does that reset button look like, Mayor? First of all, it looks like uh, reminding ourselves that democracy still uh, is still intact. Uh, democracy was never threatened here. Uh, we make decisions as a council by majority vote. Uh, in fact, uh, our council meeting tomorrow will have 43 different recommendations that council voted on at committee coming to council for us to vote on. So, you know, there's there are people who think that 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 council members are just observers in decision making and that's come directly from some council members who, you know, granted the legislation is new, perhaps folks don't quite understand it yet, uh, which is why we need to have a thoughtful conversation. Uh, some residents reaching out to me and saying, you know, that I that, that we, we now live in a dictatorship and it simply isn't the case. Uh, the legislation is there. Uh, the, the mayor has always had a unique role and responsibility in the Municipal Act as the head of council and the CEO of the corporation. Uh, those duties uh, were not are not terribly well defined in the legislation in terms of what they mean. Uh, so this legislation provides some definition to that, uh, whether people agree with what is in there or not. We can have a good debate about that, and, and we should, but we should be talking about what's what's real and not what's rumor. Uh, and, and the fact, this notion that council uh, has been completely set aside and no longer votes on, on the matters before us is, is simply incorrect and unhelpful. So the, the most most recent debate that we're having, uh, the legislation assigns certain uh, administrative duties to the mayor. Uh, there are three of those that can be reassigned either to the CAO or council, and that was the request. Uh, council asked if I would consider reassigning some of those. I reassigned two of the three. So I assigned to the CAO the ability to hire staff and set the organizational structure, and I assigned to council the ability to set up standing committees and assign their chairs and their functions. 
Yeah, I mean, like you, you mentioned this, this misinformation. Obviously, you, you don't want this getting out. Some of it's coming from from some of the counselors. How do you let that? How do you not let this kind of get off the tracks? I feel like you know your letter last week was the first step in that. But mm -hmm. are you expecting maybe a contentious debate tomorrow at, at Burlington City Council? Like, how how do you kind of keep this on the rails? To go back to our uh, go train uh, question at the top there. <laughs> Well, well, I'm going to keep trying to push out uh, information to people that is accurate and fact-based and invite that, that thoughtful dialogue. So it's actually been really encouraging to see how many people have uh, looked at the letter. We have over 1,700 views now on our website. It's one of our, uh, recently one of our most widely shared and circulated and, and viewed letter. So, so that was really the first attempt. And I thank the people who took the time to read it in its entirety and try to, to, to wrestle through this. Uh, council tomorrow will be another opportunity to level set with folks uh, what is and isn't at stake, and to remind people that that democratic decision making has continued throughout this period since the legislation has been in effect uh, for Burlington anyway and a number of other municipalities. That's July 1st. Uh, and also remind people that there's built in accountability and transparency. So uh, the mayor exercises those powers or duties, if you will, by way of mayoral decision. There is a legislated requirement that those decisions be posted online. Folks can uh, can see that on our City of Burlington webpage, and you will see the vast majority, if not all of them, uh, in some way implemented a decision of Burlington City Council, and and so including uh, actioning all the bylaws that we've passed at our council meeting. So after tomorrow's meeting, I'll write another mayoral decision saying, "Yep, that that's good. I'm not going to veto any of that," and and it's approved. And and so, uh, so, so that's they're they're largely at this point quite administrative, and uh, and that will continue. But there's built-in transparency. If if there's ever a time to use one of the um, uh, to exercise one of the duties uh, in a, in a different way, that again gets posted online. And so there's been lots of rumors. Lots of speculation about what I've used them for or might have used them for. Uh, people are relating that to uh, staff changes over the last eight months, which are completely normal in any large corporation and were not the result of a mayoral decision. Uh, those, um, you can actually go and see what I've done uh, and, and see the decisions and separate fact from fiction. All right. Uh, we'll be watching, of course, uh, Council tomorrow and see what comes of that. But let's uh, switch topics to housing. Obviously, it's been a topic mm -hmm. of conversation for the last few weeks uh, in Burlington. You have talked about uh, the, the Ontario government's measurement uh, for, for housing starts. Maybe how it might be a little unfair, uh, but we've seen a lot of announcements in the last few weeks, including Paul Colanger last mm -hmm. week, uh, Pr Prime Minister Justin Trudeau last week as well, ahead of the budget. And uh, where where is Burlington with its housing? I mean, it, Burlington's such a unique place, right? And uh, you, you, like you said, you can't pour the foundations yourself. How, how, are you, how do you feel about where Burlington is at when it comes to their housing targets? We have over 40,000 units in our pipeline. And the uh, so, so some of those will come online every single year. About half of those are really the uh, hope and a dream type of uh, applications where people are just trying to see what they can do with their land. They haven't brought in a formal application. But, but over half of those are in the application, some stage of application, right up to approved permits. We do have a number, thousands of units tied up at the Ontario Land Tribunal. So I'm confident that we can... Uh, deliver on our housing pledge uh, between now and 2031. But it's really important to recognize that Burlington is in a very unique situation in that um, we, uh, we're we mostly high-density infill. And those take a lot of months not only to process on our end, but many, many months to build those foundations before they get counted. In some cases, a foundation for one of these big buildings can be seven stories down. That takes months and months. And, and so we've explained to the minister, look, we're doing the exact kind of development that you want us to. It's high density infill. It's near our GO stations mostly. Uh, it's what you want, but 
it, you're going to see nothing, 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 nothing while all of that uh, pre work and you got to excavate the hole and then you got to put the foundation in. And CMHD doesn't count it when it's being built, they count it after it's gone all those seven stories and now emerged at surface level, uh, that's when they count all the units. And, and there's even a lag there uh, for CMHC to, to, to get out and count them. So, so my concern uh, all along has been we'll have nothing, nothing, nothing for a while, and then we'll have all, you know thousands of units coming online. Uh, and unless you're building subdivisions, you know the, the units don't come in an orderly fashion, uh, 2,900 every year, like clockwork, uh, especially not in our case. So, uh, so I'm I'm concerned we're going to not meet those targets and not get funding that we need, uh, because our situation is completely different than some other municipalities that have greenfield development. Um, you mentioned high density. I I know you mentioned the Ontario Land Tribunal that. It, it seems like Burlington has been unique in the sense that there have been so many, uh, you know, issues that have gone to the OLT and have been overturned. How, how do you balance mm -hmm. that as a mayor? Because obviously a lot of people, you, you need infill, you need housing, but a lot of people are concerned about, you know, that, that lakefront property. How do you balance that those two, that, that needing to get housing built and, and wanting to build housing and make Burlington, you know, uh, you know a, a better community for, for people, but, but also that fight with the OLT, how have you been balancing that? Because it's been a few years now. <laughs> yeah, so so my position on the OLT is that it's un undemocratic and should be abolished. It overturns. Uh, and that's actually a regional council position. I brought a motion last term of council. It was unanimously supported to request that the government uh, dismantle this body. It has long outlived any usefulness it once had. However, uh, because we still have the OLT, we have to uh, keep that in mind when we're making our decisions. And so our conversation is really twofold. Uh, I've never been anti-development. It's always been about the right development, the right scale, and the right place. And so that right place for the highest density is near our three GO stations. That's exactly what we are planning. Uh, and in fact, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we approved a uh, large development, uh, you know, over 20 stories development near the Aldershot GO station. And so that one's not going to the tribunal. That, that was probably one of the first times that this council has had an opportunity to vote on an application before it went to the tribunal. So our conversation with the community now is, Look, uh, we're, we're going to have development. It's going to be high density. We want to make sure it's in the right place. But more importantly, we want to make sure that it has good community amenities, uh, good uh, streetscape, you know, all of those things that a community uh, needs. And so tell us how we can uh, make this better, how we can make this building not just a big building, but a beautiful big building, a, a building with green space out front and some uh, public amenities or restaurants or, or community uh, retail space in the ground floor. And so our conversation is now uh, starting to shift with the community. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about your role as the chair of the uh, uh Big City Mayor's Caucus. Uh, this week, you will be hosting, Burlington and the region of Halton will be hosting uh, the annual general meeting. Um, how do you balance that role as well? I mean, as the head of this large organization, as a mayor, because there have to be times, you know, like you said, you're, you're, at, a, you're at a housing announcement uh, it, with the premier, but you're also you know, upset about not getting this money. What, what is it about that job that, that kind of drew you to it? It's a huge opportunity to have Burlington's voice at the table with decision makers uh, put our unique needs in front of the government. But together, we have learned the 29 mayors that make up the OBCM caucus. We represent 70% of the population of Ontario. And so we're a big voice and and we come together on those issues where we have shared concerns. The need for infrastructure dollars has probably been one of our biggest and we've achieved incredible success with this government with the recent announcements in the budget. One billion dollars uh, in infrastructure funding topped up with another uh, another billion very recently and uh, and then the water and wastewater dollars. So that I, I credit that to a lot of voices coming forward, but certainly ours uh, were a strong advocate of the need for that. And so uh, so that's the success and that keeps money in the pockets of our residents that we don't have to tax them for 
more on top of all the other things that they pay for. So it, it's a really important, um, it's an important opportunity. It's a very important group, and we've started to make our voice heard on behalf of all of our residents. Um, you mentioned uh, in the release, you, you, you wrote about this, we're being asked as municipalities to fund things through property tax base of a range of services that were never contemplated 100 years ago when this was put into place. Uh, the province's cost, AMO, have estimated that to the tune of about $4 billion. So the mm -hmm. funding in the budget, very welcome, a big step in the recognition that you can't do it alone. Uh, where, where can you go from here now? The federal budget announcement, obviously you know some of the things that are coming from that, but, yep. but what are you hoping for? Or, uh, you know, in the next few months, next few years, when it comes to just the funding that that your city needs, that Ontario city needs uh, to get these housing, these ambitious housing targets uh, built. Well, we've asked at both. Uh, so OBCM has asked uh, AMO, which is the Provincial Association of Municipalities, FCM, which is the Federal Association. All three of us are singing from the same songbook that we actually need a complete reset in the relationship between municipalities to the federal and provincial governments. And that's not just on funding, which, which clearly they've all now started to recognize is inadequate and they're giving us, uh, they're starting to now give us significant investments, which is very much appreciated, but also on the matter of policy. I mean, something that was just recently changed in the provincial housing legislation was our own ability to adjust tax rates for purpose-built rental. We didn't have that that ability to just do that because it made good policy sense if we want to incentivize purpose-built rental. We have to wait for the provincial government to change that policy. So the province has uh, has had a, a City of Toronto Act in recognition that they're, uh, they need a special set of regulations and perhaps more permissions. They've recently now done a new deal with Toronto and, and added Ottawa. And so we have said, look, uh, every municipality needs a new deal in the federation, a new deal with their provincial partners and with our federal partners. Uh, we cannot continue to run cities the way we have uh, based on a hundred year old model. And so the whole thing needs a do over and a rethink and a reset. And it's not just about money. It really is about autonomy and decision making and who does what. Uh, and that's the conversation that has been uh, started really over a year ago, but but having uh, we're having that very intently now with the announcements of the new deals. Uh, let's talk about uh, Burlington. <laughs> I know we've been talking about Burlington, but let's talk about, about your city. You've been mayor uh, six years now, a term and a half. Uh, when you look back on your time, you know, six years, what, what are you most proud of uh, when it comes to your accomplishments uh, in the city? We are investing in uh, parks, in community centres. We've purchased several parks during uh, my time and expanded. Uh, we're looking at more of those opportunities with redevelopment, obviously, and partnering with, uh, you know, with developers to get more green space for our community. Uh, we've invested in two uh, community centres, so a, a redo of the Skyway. So it's it's really nothing like it was before. It'll be an NHL NHL size rink warm viewing centers, community meeting space, and of course we purchased uh, Robert Bateman High School, now the Robert Bateman Community Center under construction that will have uh, a library, uh, the school board will maintain some space in there. We have Brock University coming to town, uh, the gyms are there, the pool uh, that we didn't own, uh, so we preserved and protected that, but now we do. Uh, so these are community amenities that, that we've really needed to uh, increase and enhance because of our growing population, and we're not done yet. Uh, those, those are things that are going to be needed, especially in our GO station areas where there's going to be high density. We want people to be able to walk outside, go to a community center, go to a rink or, or uh, a library, uh, you know, go to a store, go to one of those uh, places and get what they need so they don't have to get in their car. Uh, we've also made major investments in in transit and transportation and made transit free for low-income folks, for students uh, after hours, for youth under 12 and seniors uh, 365 uh, days a year, seven days a week, seniors over 65 ride free. And, and it's our way of trying to get more people to use the bus. And, it, and we've seen incredible results, uh, double digit increases in ridership as a result of those changes. So th those are, I could talk all day, but those are just some <laughs> of the big ones that I care passionately about. And, and directing development to the right place. So, so that's been a big shift 
uh, to get it out of uh, neighborhoods. We have modest growth in those areas, but the major density will be where it belongs around our GO stations. You mentioned the GO station. Let's talk about the Aldershot. Uh, there was a presentation uh, before the city uh, recently, and you mentioned uh, the possibility of another uh, satellite uh, campus for a post-secondary education. Mm -hmm. um, the Aldershot uh, development, uh, what do you see as the future there? What, where do you see that area? Because, again, it, it, it's a great spot, and we all know where it is. But where, how do you see that development growing the community of Burlington? This is a signature parcel, a major parcel in the city, and really will show the way for what we what we mean when we say a complete community. It will have uh, its its vision for that site is to have post secondary to have a major. Uh, community space, a uh, sports facility or arena. Uh, we know we need that space. Um, you know, lots of new residential development, and that can accommodate uh, rental, condo, different types of housing units. A huge uh, park space in there, retail will be part of that. And, and this really is going to be the showcase for how we want all of those new major areas around our GO stations to develop. We want it to have all those amenities. It's not just about, uh, you know, a, a, a place to lay your head. It's not just about a high rise uh, and then you have to get on the train or, or somewhere else to, to get what you need. We want all of that together as a complete community and we know we need more community amenities. So it's a really exciting time for us to see that vision unfold and, and to bring the community along in these conversations and hear what they've got to say and we've got some more community engagement uh soon to be announced oh. on all of this so stay tuned <laughs> ah that's a tease that's a of course you would know that in this business uh that's a, that's a tease so i guess we'll have to bring you back uh, once that's announced uh the one thing you mentioned is sports you mentioned an arena uh how open would the city of burlington be in in supporting a potential ohl franchise uh, with this mm -hmm. new facility we're open to any and all options, including that one. And I think the key for us is partnerships. We know that we need to partner with the private sector and that includes sports franchises to get these um, you know to get these structures built but also it, it it is really great if you can have a rent paying tenant for a long period of time that's guaranteed source of revenue and we don't always have that in our uh, community facilities but that really that was the uh, the brainchild of Robert Bateman High School, where we have four partners who help pay not only for the purchase of it, but now for the ongoing operating uh, that have uh, co-located space, lots left over for the community as well. Uh, but that's how it's going to happen. These are major, you know, hundred million plus dollar investments in many cases. Uh, and so we need to partner with the private sector, either on land or on operating or, or on capital or all of that. So the Burlington Bulldogs, uh, possible, I'm just, there's good alliteration <laughs> there, but uh, any any true to those rumors? Bring it conversations? on. Bring it on. <laughs> you know what? We're, we're open to talking to anybody and everybody who wants to partner with us. So we, we would love to, you know, the sky's the limit, really. Uh, we need to dream big and, and make it happen for our community. And I've had a lot of people say, yeah, certainly that we need more ice uh we need more ice and we need more <laughs> ice time for the demands that that the, and this would be community space for them too as well of mm -hmm. course yeah absolutely um mayor i really appreciate making the time i know you're very busy you're hosting like you said 28 other uh, big city mayors uh, in burlington this week so i appreciate you making the time to join us today Thanks so much. Appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Uh, my thanks to the mayor of Burlington, Marianne Mead Ward, for joining me today on Newsmakers. Make sure you subscribe to CHCH Podcast so you never miss an episode of this show or any of the other great shows we have for you, including Sportsline with Bubba O'Neill that you can catch every Tuesday to Friday here on CHCH Podcast. My thanks to Mike Corston for directing today's episode, and my thanks to you as well for joining us because we could not do the show without your support. So thank you, thank you, thank you. From all of us here at CHCH, I'm Louis Butko. Have a great day.